Welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon, and today I am talking with Baruch Akbush. And first of all, Baruch, thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are welcome. It's going to be a great um, conversation because um, I'm not really sure if I've had anybody on my podcast that does what you do. And uh, Baruch is going to explain to us and help us understand uh, really the real purpose behind a business is the valuation of that business. How can we as entrepreneurs know the worth of our business and think about long-term exit strategies and valuations and all of those things? That's what we're going to dive into. So as we jump into this conversation, Baruch, tell me, how in the world did you get doing what you're doing today? So I'll try to be very short and concise, <laughs> even though it's a journey. Sure. I came to this country in 92 looked for a career, ultimately decided that I'll be a programmer, web developer. Okay. I started building websites right before the dot-com boom happened. So I've been building a lot of sites only to find out that uh, a lot of them would go nowhere. Basically, if you build it, nobody's coming, right? I knew for sure, Michael, no, because in marketing world. Yeah. After being a programmer for 15 years, I came to a conclusion that I reached my ceiling. I'm not really growing. And what's the point of building something that will never be used, right? So I went and transitioned into lead generation world. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm not going to just build it for you. I'm going to also bring you business. So wow. I did the pay-per-click advertisements for some time, like five years. So I was hitting another wall. What was that other wall is I was getting feedback from business owners that your leads are not targeted. We cannot close your leads. I then deeper, I realized that they're not really responding fast enough to the leads and they don't really have a way to handle outbound approach, right? Usually they wait for incoming, it's a receptionist that answers. I realize I want to get in deeper. I want to understand what's behind scenes. When I was approaching business owners about, uh, hey, show me what's behind scenes, maybe I can streamline that somehow. The, it's none of your business, right? In some way. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to find a way. And that's how I came across buying actual franchise business coaching firm that was it's the biggest in the world action coach business coaching yeah i love uh, the culture i love the processes systems so that gave me opportunity now to get into business so i can help you now not just build it i can help you also bring traffic in addition to that i can streamline and have all the processes in place long story short for some reasons i had to exit that uh, franchise and I went and started to be uh, involved uh, in some businesses uh, as a business consultant and also was working on my own ventures. Having some of those uh, successfully done, I found that a lot of business owners are selling businesses, but they have no idea what to ask for it. And uh, usually when you approach a business broker or a, a buyer, you'll get the question, uh, can I see the last three years of your P&L? If you were not intentional, your PNL is all over the place. And a lot of business owners, of course, work not in an intentional manner. So right. they're not really prepared. To sell a business, you need at least three years because they, you got to show them that it was an uptrend. You want to show that yeah. you had a process, that you're getting somewhere. So unfortunately, to a lot of business owners, it's all about clients and team and my product. But at the end of the day, that's not a primary thing. At the end of the day, there's something higher than revenue. It's actually... Profits, yes. uh, and even that is not primary. Yes, profits are used to calculate the value of the business, but there's two more items that uh, you need to be mindful of. As investors, we look at the business. What am I investing? What would be the return on investment? And what would be the risk level? That's if you take the playing cards as a deck. So your profits is a king, return on investment and risk level opposite. The profits is your queen. The king yeah. is your return on investment and the risk level. And what's the ace of the business is the capitalization. How do you come to find out what's the actual value of the business? Right. Business owners would be only aware of this one thing. Their focus would be consider, completely changed, right? So their focus should be constantly on profits. How can I maximize profits and do it in a consistent manner so it would be attractive to the investors or the buyers of the business? I love it. I love it. having a what I would call a bottom line 
focus for your business versus the top line. So many people, I'm around everybody that's, we've got a seven-figure business, but they're not making any money. No. You can keep yeah, it. The unfortunate thing is you might have seven-figure business, but ultimately you will heal, hit the wall, right? Yes. Like a natural way for entrepreneurs to blossom, they one day find out that they can do better than their boss and they start their own venture. They yes, uh, leverage their uh, experience. They, uh, at best, uh, get to the point where they have somebody helping them on operation side and they position themselves on sales. Usually they outsource marketing and marketing is never necessarily streamlined with their sales and everything else. And not talking about the IT and finances and so on. So ultimately they hit the wall. They know they can go sell more, but their current team cannot handle it. Because right. the quality will suffer. And if I would expand my team, I don't really have processes. I already experienced turnover. I already have inconsistencies. So how can I bring more teammates if I cannot handle whoever is under me right now? So they stuck in that plateau at that seven figure. And they can never yeah. really get to the next level unless they introduce the process systems, technology, and proper routines for everything that uh, needs to be within a business. Yes. Amen. Because if you have a business like that, and, and I may be out uh, out to lunch here, but it's not a, as attractive to an investor because there aren't systems in place. There are You're hitting walls and an, and an investor is going to say, our eye is not going to be there. Risk is really high. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Because it's owner operated, right? Investors want to be above the business means uh, I'll give you the money. I see the risk level is low. I'm going to get my return on investment. And I wanted to keep it as a passive income, right? right? So to come in, some of them, okay, they need to be a little more experienced if they want to work on the business. They work on the strategies, business development, but owner operated businesses, they cannot function without them. All the questions go to the business owner himself, and he's a bottleneck for the whole business. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, right now, there's a huge trend. Baby boomers looking to uh, exit their businesses. It's time to retire, but their kids do not want it. Why? Right. Because it's not really a business. It's a job. And yep. the kids nowadays, they're not necessarily aligned with the way uh, the older generation was doing things. Yes. Uh, it's uh, not... Uh, they're not really looking to for hard work. They want everything easy. They want everything fast. So they want to just hands off technology style business. Yeah. They'll go to e-commerce or SaaS or some other, but not uh, necessarily uh, roll up their sleeves and uh, deal with people, deal with the day-to-day -day stuff. So let's dive in here because you, you just hit a lot of things that business owners across the board, whether you run a, a plant of some nature, whether you're an attorney, a financial advisor, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. They're all of those businesses are, are really at the core, very similar. Building a business is the same at one level because you need certain pieces and parts. Exactly. What are business owners really struggling with when they before they come to you? Okay. What's going on in their life that, that they're sitting here so that as they're listening to this, they're going to go, oh, that's me. That's me. What are the struggles they're having before they come and, and work with you? Yeah, the biggest struggles, again, those are symptoms. That's not the source right. of the issue, right? But symptoms would be I reach a plateau, I feel a burnout, uh, I work uh, with uh, no days off, uh, nobody can do anything without me, uh, I have to be constantly involved, I bring, I bring uh, work home. Even their teammates, they bring uh, all that work home because during the day, they cannot uh, keep up with everything. I've managed uh, a multi-million dollar businesses work with different uh, management. There's always uh, complaints that uh, their work day does not end when they leave the work. They always uh, bring it home. They work late yeah. nights to keep up with everything. And when you ask them, what did you do during the day? They've been babysitting their teammates uh, instead of uh, uh, doing their part, right? Burnout, no time for anything. Anytime you find yourself that you do not have time for anything, that means you're not doing what's important. You're yeah. just uh, looking busy and you're not really producing the biggest value yeah. to get you out of that. In addition to that, they basically experience a lot of turnover and a lot of entitlement. The teammates uh, hide everything. There's no transparency. And the more teammates have the information that the management has access, uh, don't have access to, more entitlement they feel. Because now you coming to me to ask me, where are we? You do not know yeah. where we are uh, without asking me. So that's automatically putting me in the position of power instead of you leading me. Now I'm going to lead you with information that I want to expose. And obviously I'm going to expose what's in my interest. This way it's not on my case, right? Yes. So, so those 
symptoms. Uh, and at, at the core, of course, is uh, a lot of uh, business owners, founders, they're more on the creative side. Uh, it's yeah. like a composer who created music, but they're not really necessarily operational. They don't have operational mindset. They not necessarily have the discipline to right. come in and do certain things uh, consistently. For that, you need a conductor. Conductor, yes. it's a completely different uh, mindset. They like day-to-day -day stuff. They like routines. They like details. And they delegate. Most of the business owners, they're not. The biggest torture for them is working on the business, creating systems. They don't want to deal with that. They're like, you create the systems for me. My team is the problem. I don't really have any problems. You like deal with them, yes. figure out. That's usually the attitude. So identifying what's the issue and understanding the psyche of type of teammates that you bring on board, putting them in the right places, giving them proper motivation to for them to be inspired to hit certain goals, teach them how to set goals, show them how to achieve those goals, yep. hit those milestones. So once you again, bring proper people, leverage technology, have all the processes, enforce all those processes, you have a successful business. Then Absolutely. Rules. And it's not as hard as it sounds when you have somebody like you guiding and directing. It's just that it's hard to do when nobody's ever taught you how to do it. Yeah, you don't know what you do not know. You're not even aware. Uh, right. Well, part of the healing is when you already know uh, what the problem is. But a lot of business owners, no offense, but uh, they're in denial. And uh, totally. there's a lot of blaming and all kinds of excuses going on. So they're not really pinpointing to the core and say, okay, yeah. this is the problem. Like, how do I solve it? How do I close that gap? Who can come in and guide me? Yeah. So that's where we come in. And that's good because, and you said it, and I rephrased it just a bit. Symptoms are not the source of the issue. Yes. And that is so important because so many times I see business owners finding a symptom and, and building a solution for the symptom which just runs them right, right into the wall because they're not yes. solving the issue. Exactly. Well, it's a major and, point you just brought up. Exactly. And so many times, if you don't know how to seriously think about things in business and dive in to, I, I did a thinking time the other day. This is, this is just so appropriate. And I was looking at one of the challenges in our business and I said, okay, what is going on here? And I made a list, Baruch. It was number 23 on the list of, I listed, 23, 22 other answers. When I hit 23, I wrote that and I looked, and I'm like, that's the issue. None of this other stuff. They're just symptoms. It probably took me 40 minutes to get there. Yeah. Wow. But now I have clarity. Yes. <laughs> Business owners don't do that. Yeah, but it's not their fault, right? It's our education system that pushes uh, us to be best followers. Right? Yes. So here's the topic. See if you can uh, retell it. So the best parrot uh, goes to yes. the next level that who gets recognized. And if not, then you're basically out. Most of the AB students, they ultimately end up in uh, pursuing education colleges. And once they graduate, they're looking for bigger firms to get hired and grow in corporate ladder. Yes. So who left CDF students that said, I'm not college material, I'm going to go look for a career. And small business owners uh, that were dominant enough, A personalities, they go start businesses and who do they hire? They're not uh, able to hire somebody who went through uh, and got their higher education. They're hiring the dropouts or people yeah. that graduated high school, but not necessarily good followers. So they right. bring that attitude into the business. And that's why most of the time you hear business owners complain, there's no good work out there not really they are you just do not know how to attract them you don't know how to position things to identify who has proper work ethics and creative critical thinking like yourself right now you described it required tension most yeah. of the people most of the teammates they're not set up for that you tell me what right. to do i'll do it beyond that this is not what i'm cut out for I'm looking it's not what i signed up for i look forward to friday because yes. Friday weekend, there's no tension. And I hate Mondays because on Monday, tension starts. Yes. Right? So what we want opposite, we want somebody who embraces tension because they know tension is growth. And yes. I embrace growth and associate positive emotions with growth. I'm not uh, resenting it because I know right. just like an athlete, right? Athlete is being pressured by the manager. They sweat. And, but they're not denying the trainer. They know that trainer means well for them, even though they're sweating and they went through all this yeah. tension, they know that they're going to the next level if they keep on doing that. 
Absolutely. One, one of the best examples I heard somebody say one time was a uh, tension around tension and everything. A rubber band doesn't work unless it has tension around something, right? Awesome. And I thought that is really good. So we need we need tension. And and I think with the right structure around your business, the right culture, your people should come in and say, okay, I'll embrace this because I'm going to grow. And there should be carrots down the road for their growth. And they should be waiting for Monday to come because I'm going to do some fun things. And that's, is that how you help business owners make this transition? Yes. We basically, when we come in, we first identify what the long-term vision is, and then we create the strategy, right? We'll identify where you are, where you're going, what would be the route that you would take. Then we talk about the core values, the principles under which you want to work. Very critical. And growth is one of the main core values. A lot of people say that I want to grow, but they don't really mean it. And how do you know is when the crunch time comes, you start to see, especially when you have to work in a transparent manner, right? Yes. If you go to the store, you're giving them, let's say, $5 for a loaf of bread. You know exactly what you're getting. You know exactly what you paid. Unfortunately, with our labor, it doesn't work that way. Teammates know exactly how much money they get per day for their work, but the business owners do not know exactly what they get in return for that money exchange. So our mission is to make it transparent, right? I'm paying you, let's say, $200 a day. For that $200 a day, I expect from you to put effort in quantity yeah. this much, in quality this much. It would produce this type of outcome, and that outcome brings me this much profits into the business. And therefore, I freely can pay you 200 bucks a day because I see it as an investment. That's right. And Things are not transparent like that. As soon as you make it the, that transparent, a lot of teammates go away. Only peak performers love that because they want you to recognize them uh, for their work, and they constantly on the on the journey on the constant journey of uh, growth, right? So they yes. want to increase their value in the marketplace. So we bring culture of uh, growing their value in the marketplace. We set the career goals, personal goals, besides all the company goals that are also exposed to them. So we simultaneously show them that it's not about the, the bottom line for the company. It's also while you work with us, we want to make sure that your future is secured as well. Business is just a vehicle for you to get to your personal career goals. So we position everything like that. So then there's motivation. Now I have motivation to move forward. Yeah, Show me absolutely. what the goal is. Let's break it down. Show me in a small milestones how I can achieve those. Support me, squeeze me, push me. Of course, everything in a respectful manner uh, where uh, there's mutual respect yeah. and uh, somebody uh, agreed to be pressured and, and have that tension to achieve those goals. They'll be grateful. That's what they will be. achieve. That's awesome. That is really good because core values and culture is so important. And I don't see a lot of people talking about it. I don't see I don't see good books written about it for entrepreneurs. And and I really don't see much talked about in this whole valuation of business because what we're talking about is you you put this in place and the value of your business goes up because you you're building systems, you've got great culture, you've got alignment, you're going to have more revenue, you're going to have more profits. That's all very um, enticing for an investor when you want to exit. Exactly. It also positions you for scale, right? You want to open additional locations. You want to expand to other countries. You have a core that allows you to do that. In many cases, business owners, when they start to expand business growth, they focus on revenue, right? The more revenue they increase, they start to decrease their margins. Yes. So they just look busy. And they right. don't understand how come when I had less, I was taking home a lot more than now. I just now look busier. And they're afraid to make the business grow because they know with additional projects, additional growth, that means no time for me. I'm already like stretched myself and have uh, very little time for anything. Now you want me to do even more. How much more so if any of the teammates leave? Now I have to do my job. I have to do that, that uh, job of that teammate and I have to go recruit somebody. So they find themselves wearing so many hats and again, it's just bigger burnout. So they tolerate even more. They're afraid to let anybody go. And from with that, of course, they create even more entitlement and uh, it's just... Yeah. It's a downward cycle versus an upward cycle. So how do you... you? So if one of my audience listeners is out there and they're like, that's me, you just explained... 
How do they work with you? What's the process look like? Is it a short term, long term, high level? What do they? What happens when they engage with you? Yeah, it it depends on the uh, where they are. Uh, initially, what would need to happen is uh, they would need to uh, reach out. Uh, we can share some free resources uh, with them. Uh, one of those, they can also schedule like a business diagnostic where after going, uh, spending with us a couple of hours, we'll identify uh, the source of a bunch of issues that they have. Based on that, uh, we will let them know what the the route would look like. But on average, expect to invest at least a year to set mm-hmm. all the processes in place where you would uh, step aside. So there's three major components. We have people, we have technology, and we have processes, right? Again, some business owners, they have uh, some of it, but not everything in place. So when we come in and set it up everything uh, the proper way, it would take at least a year. But with that, of course, they will see tremendous growth in revenue. In many cases, yep. it's more than double, for sure, close to double in profits. Also, opportunity to expand horizons for them to go and actually market themselves even further to bring more business. It's in, and I hope somebody, I, I hope you just heard what he said. You probably need to rewind this thing about two minutes and re listen because business owners are, we're all about revenue, higher revenue, so that what? So that I can get more profit, so I can take more time off or whatever. And what you just said is, but by engaging with you and your team over the course of a year, you're going to be able to drive more profits because the business is going to become more efficient. Exactly. And, and you don't have to go out and get more clients and do more stuff. You need to make sure your margins are right. And then you may say, wow, I don't need to do anything else because I'm happy with where I am. Is, have you found things like that? Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Just like in marketing with you, Michael, right? The marketing to many business owners is an expense and they avoid it. And they even put it in the expense column with their accountants, right? But in reality, if you do marketing, it's an investment. Yes. So you always find your fee if you do your marketing uh, correctly. You also right. find your, we find our fee if we would uh, engage with a business owner. We will show how engaging with us, it was not an expense. It was actually right. a profit because as soon as it's a, an expense and not an investment, there's no point to continue the relationship. That's right. That's right. And and when they get this after this year, they're going to be in, in a much better spot to keep the business, to scale the business, to sell the business, to transition to the to the next generation or to their team. There, you you now have options. How about that? Yes. Because right now, I think a lot of business owners are in prison to their own making, and you give them the keys to get out. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I think that is amazing. How I I, I know Baruch, you you and I could talk for another thirty or forty minutes easy because I've got a whole litany of questions in my head right now. But there's a lot more I want to share. Is understand also the. <laughs> The time limit here. Yeah. You've got a couple free resources on your website that talk about valuation of businesses and things. Let's just name one or two of those resources, and then let's talk about how somebody actually engages with you. Sure. If you'll go to akbash.com, A-K-B-O-S-H.com, there's a button on the top right corner for you to download the business valuation kit. What that is, a set of documents checklist uh, for you to uh, read. Again, our mission first, create the awareness, right? And uh, make you aware that uh, it is in your hands. Uh, It's not because of something, right? Second thing you can do is after that, once you reach out to to us, you can uh, just uh, reach out directly to one of our teammates and ask uh, to schedule a business diagnostic. Most likely I'll get involved and uh, take a look and we would take it from there. Of -hmm. course, it's at no charge. Anybody can take advantage of it. Ideally, yeah. of course, our target, who, what we after is because we engage in consulting, right? We guide, we'll, that's at no charge, right? But if somebody goes for a coaching program, consulting program, that's where we engage. We yeah. also, again, find our fee. We partner with business owners and some of them we actually acquire. There's many ways we can handle the from there. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to grab that URL and everything. I'll have that in the show notes because our listeners are entrepreneurs. They're busy doing things, right? So I want to make sure that all of that's going to be in the show notes. So if this has resonated with you, if you find yourself just, yeah, taking work home, getting frustrated, everybody in your team's a problem, <clears throat> that that would be an issue. But ha- reach out to find out some of these resources and there there is help available. There's hope 
And if you're running a business, you're probably not too far off from having a business that can scale, can be valued much higher. You just need somebody to guide you down that pathway because it just it's just not intuitive. Okay, it just isn't. That's why you need to reach out to Baruch and just have that conversation. Download that, that information that he has. Have the call, the diagnostic call. That is amazing that you do that. Take the steps and please don't wait till the last minute. Engage with them now and just have the conversation and say, wow, where is my business and how could it be better? Because you might find that this is the best investment you're ever going to make in your business because this is going to set you up for long-term success, whether you're going to keep the business, sell the business, transit, whatever it is, you're going to know that you actually built a great business and it has great value, not just to you, but to other people. But Baruch, thank you. And this this has been really insightful and very fun because it's different than um, a lot of the things that we talk about on, on this, this show. But um, you do a lot of great work and, and I appreciate what you're doing to help business owners. So thanks for showing up and, and being my guest today on Expert Speak. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 